here is uh, the overview I want you to pay attention to. So we are speaking here about Form 965E. Of course, we are speaking about consent agreement. And this is under uh, 965I4D. This is the, the session of the Internal Revenue Code that we are actually uh, paying attention to in today's conversation. So I want you to look on the screen right now. Here is how the form looks like. So it's called a consent agreement on the section 965I4D. Okay. So basically, I'm not going to, you know, for the sake of uh, time here, we're not going to fill out the form, but I just want to show you what it looks like. So part one, you have to put the shareholder information. And don't forget, when we talk, when we talk about shareholder information, we're speaking about everything. Okay. It's all about transparency here. So the first name, last name, the address, the city, the zip, and, uh, and everything. And you have to put the taxpayer identification number. So this could be the the tax the shareholders a TIN T I N or social security number. And so this is part one. Part one is pretty pretty straightforward. Part two here you have to put the identifying information of the S corporation, right? So when we talk about Form 965 E, there is an element of S corporation here. So you have to put the, the name of the S corporation and the taxpayer identification number if applicable. And part three, here we are speaking about the triggering events. You have to understand, I, I will, I will explain a little one uh, what those things really mean. But when we talk about section uh, 965 I to a double I, you are, you are have, a, you, you have, you have a variety of uh, triggering events that really will uh, apply to this specific case here. So basically, if you have a triggering event, you have to put the date of the triggering event and you have to provide a detailed description of that triggering event. In other words, you have to contextualize that triggering events, okay? Part four is pretty straightforward. So part four actually uh, relates to a net tax liability. And part five here, we are speaking about the, the shareholder's ability to make payments required under this section here. So again, this uh, I'm just showing you this because uh, when it comes to for, Form 965E, it's a pretty convoluted tax form. So we're not going to go into all details here. If you have specific questions, let us know in the comment section. I just wanted to show you to give you a, a general idea about those four. The next screenshot here, I just want to show you here, you have a uh, part four, I mean, sorry, part uh, six. Part six here, you are basically, uh, you have the terms of uh, agreement and don't forget to sign and actually date the form. You have to print, print your name and print your title and also uh, put your date time, phone number and so on and so forth. So the bottom line here is that uh, basically uh, when we talk about uh, form 965E, you have to understand that uh, this is part of uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And uh, basically, it wasn't part of the uh, original Internal Revenue Code. He came into it later on, okay? And it's one of those things where the legislator is constantly trying to uh, update uh, the tax laws of this nation anyway. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. I want to talk to you about the key components of the, this Form 965E. So when we talk about Form 965E, of course, we are speaking about a constellation of uh, data points. First of all, you have the shareholder information. So basically, we are speaking in here about this U, the U.S. shareholder, including the name, first name, last name, the taxpayer identification number, and contact information. And also, uh, you have to uh, mention a specified foreign corporation information. So it, this is a part of the disclosure that is needed under this, this law. So if there's relevant information that regarding the specified foreign corporation, you have to really say it. So we, we are speaking about the entity's name, EIN and tax year. And uh, it's one of those things where uh, you also have to think about the consent agreement and also the calculation of accumulated deferred foreign income. So when we talk about consent agreement, you know, this is actually a, a crucial part of Form 965E. I showed, you, I showed this to you a little earlier. So the taxpayer must affirm his or her consent to the inclusion of his or her share of accumulated deferred foreign income in the specified foreign corporation's income. Okay, and again, it's a, it really require it's all in the spirit of transparency. And uh, you also have to think about the calculation of accumulated deferred foreign income, and it's one of those things where again this goes back to what I said about the transparency. So when you actually analyze a Form 965E. You have a tax form that provides a constellation of benefits, especially when it comes to uh, optimization, when it comes to transparency, and when it comes to efficiency. So let me talk to you about the benefits of Form 965E. You have about four to five benefits. You have deferral of tax liability. 
you have reduced interest and penalties, you have improved cash flow management, you have compliance with tax obligations, and you have avoidance of adverse tax consequences. So when we talk about deferral of tax liability, the everything revolves around the consent agreement because this is a, an agreement that allows eligible taxpayers to uh, defer their tax liability related to the transaction tax on certain foreign earnings. So instead of uh, what happens here is that you have a deferral not only of uh, your tax liability, but also of the payment. So instead of paying the full tax liability upfront, as a taxpayer, you can elect to pay the tax in installments over an eight-year period. Think about that, eight-year period. This is pretty cool. So this gives you a lot of time to think, right, and to really breathe also. So you have that, and uh, also you do not want to have uh, adverse tax consequences. This is very important as well. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about Form 965E. Ability here. So when we talk about Form 965E, we are speaking about a, a very specific uh, niche market here, if you will, especially when it comes to taxes, okay? And so to be eligible to file Form 965E, you must meet the, the following criteria. We have uh, three important criteria, and this trifecta is really quite essential if you want to really, uh, if you want to comply with the law. So you are, you are a United States shareholder of an SFC. So SFC, we are speaking about the specified foreign corporation. So that, that's the first criteria. You are, you are a U.S. shareholder of an SFC. You, the second criteria, you have a net tax liability under Section 965. Again, 965 does not, you can't find a 965 in the original Internal Revenue Code. You find 965 in the TCJA, okay? And the third criterion is if you want to defer your net tax liability. Let's really elaborate, elaborate a little bit. So, you must be a U.S. person who owns stock in a specified foreign corporation. A U.S. shareholder is generally a U.S. person, individual, corporation, or partnership, among others, who owns 10% or more of the voting stock of a foreign corporation. That's the first part. Second part is you have a net tax liability under Section 965. So, Section 965 of the TCJA imposes a transition tax on the untaxed foreign earnings of certain foreign corporations. So if you have a, a net tax liability under Section 965, you may be eligible to enter into a consent agreement to defer the payment of that liability. Or And, and the third item is here, if you want to defer your net tax liability, so by filing Form 965E and entering into a consent agreement with the IRS, you can defer payment of the net tax liability imposed under Section 965I. One over a period of eight years. So, the, you know, this is really important to really mention because eight years really gives you a lot of time to really uh, straighten out your, uh, you, I would say, your finances. I want to talk to you about the steps you need to really follow when it comes to Form 965E. You can see that now, this form is pretty straightforward, but it, re it requires some attention to details especially when it comes to a uh, certain aspect of it. First of all, you want to obtain the form. So this is a form that's pretty straightforward. As I said earlier, you can just uh, go to the IRS website to get the, the latest version of the form and you want to gather the necessary information because if it, see, the thing is that we are speaking here about your financial statements and also records of, for, of uh, foreign income because 965E has to deal with the foreign income. And if, if there are any relevant schedules or forms filed previously, you also want to have that uh, at hand and you want to complete the header section. So you are providing things like your social security number, your tax year, your, your name, first name, last name. And you have to calculate the deferred foreign income subject to transition tax. So you want to follow the instructions on the form to determine the deferred foreign income subject to transition tax. So this involves what? Calculating the uh, relevant amounts based on the specified rules and provisions. So this is kind of important. One thing I want to say here is that don't forget to fill details to report uh, the foreign, the deferred foreign income, and you got to really attach the relevant schedules and forms. So we are speaking here about the Schedule A. Schedule A actually provides the details of uh, previously taxed earnings and profits, and Schedule B reports specified foreign corporations. Okay, so you want to double check all the information. You want to sign the form. You always want to sign the form. If you do not sign the form, the IRS will not process. The, uh, the the your form 965e and if you are filing jointly both spouses must sign the form 
So once everything is, uh, once you double check everything, you know, in terms of uh, the law and everything, you can you can just uh, submit the form. And uh, don't forget to keep a copy of the completed form uh, for your records. This is form 965E, and you want to submit the form according to the IRS instructions. So this may involve mailing it to the designated IRS address or electronically if, uh, you know, if the electronic filing format is available. So it's one of those things where you have to see what, which one is applicable to your situation. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about form 965E. Let me give you a couple of special considerations when following this form. It's, it's important to, to understand that everything revolves around transition tax, okay? So Form 965 actually uh, has to deal with transition tax calculation. So this transition tax is uh, calculated based on the accumulated foreign earnings and profits of a specified foreign corporations as of certain specified dates. It's important to accurately calculate the ENP, earnings and profits, and follow the instructions provided by the IRS for the transition tax calculation, okay? And it's not really a straightforward. That's why we actually recommend, uh, if you have no idea what I'm speaking about, it's just better to to actually uh, refer everything to uh, a specialist. And also, when we talk about the specified foreign corporations, we are speaking about uh, U.S. shareholders who own at least 10% of the voting stock in one or more specified foreign corporations. So ensure that the foreign corporations meet the criteria and are properly identified on the form and uh, we also talk about reporting deferred foreign income so this is important you have elections and adjustments in some cases you have foreign tax credits you have a uh, reporting and payment uh, deadlines and uh, so form 965e has specific reporting and payment deadlines that must be adhered to it's important to be aware of this deadlines and file the form and make the tax payments accordingly to uh, avoid penalties and interest charges and it's one of those things where again Everything I'm telling you today, if it sounds like a uh, you know, foreign language to you, it's just a lot better to uh, to uh, enlist the help of a tax professional, okay? Filing form 965E can be complex, especially if you have multiple foreign corporations and significant deferred foreign income. So consider seeking the assistance of a qualified tax professional or accountant who is experienced with uh, international tax matters to ensure compliance and accurate reporting. And again, it, it's better that you start a little earlier so you have a clear idea of what you're getting yourself into. So when I talk about a qualified tax professional, going back to what I always say on this show here, we are speaking about, you know, just a regular tax preparer or one of those three categories, enrolled agent, tax attorney, or a certified public accountant. That way you know that you have the depth and breadth of expertise needed. Let's talk about the filing deadlines and extensions for Form 965E. So when we talk about Form 965E, I think I've said this before, everything real, everything revolves around your uh, your income from international operations and uh, I, mean, I would say international uh, investments. So first of all, when we talk about the original filing deadline, so the original due date for Form uh, 965E is typically the same as the due date for the income tax return. Okay, so we're speaking about Form 1040 here. So the due date here is uh, generally uh, April 15th for calendar year taxpayers. And, but however, the due date can vary depending on weekends, holidays, and uh, other factors. So it's always essential to uh, refer to the specific uh, to the specific tax year's instructions, or you can just go to the IRS website to uh, have uh, the most up-to-date information. But the thing is, if your situation uh, requires for an extension, it's just better to uh, seek an extension of time to file. Okay, if you need more time to complete this form, you can request an extension. Now, the extension is, is automatic. Okay, so and everything happens through a form 4868. It's called Application for Automatic Extension of Time to File U.S. Individual Tax Return. So this form extends the filing deadline for both your tax return and any related forms, such as 965E. So this is kind of cool. So we are speaking about you, you receiving an additional uh, six months moving the deadline to October 15th for calendar year taxpayers, okay? 
and you also have an estimated tax payments. So if you have an estimated tax liability related to a Form 965E, just start making timely estimated tax payments to, uh, to avoid penalties and uh, interest charges. And uh, the cool thing is the payments actually are typically due in installments throughout the tax year with the final payments due by the original due date of the tax return or by the extended due date if an extension has been granted. And also when we talk about the updated information for a Form 965E, you have to understand Form 965E does not relate to uh, the Internal Revenue Code. It's part of the TCJA. So there are cases where the TCJA is, a, is a updated or amended. So make sure you have the latest information. So the best way to do this is to go to the IRS websites and uh, all, the, all the info is there. So uh, www.irs.gov. So when we talk about uh, Form 965E, in the, uh, for the sake of compliance, there are some mistakes that you need to really avoid, okay? And the first thing you want to do is you want to have correct and complete information. So you do not want to put stuff that is that is just approximate. No, you want to be as uh, thorough as possible. And you want to really uh, calculate properly the transition tax. Because see, remember, transition tax is a key aspect of Form 65E. So it's essential to correctly calculate the amount of deferred foreign income that should be included and the corresponding tax liability. So you want to use the appropriate tax rates and follow the IRS guidelines to ensure accurate, accurate calculations. And uh, it's one of those things where when we talk about accurate calculations, of course, we are speaking about uh, calculations mathematically, but also calculations in terms of comp in, in terms of completeness. In other words, you have to uh, include all relevant foreign subsidiaries. So, uh, you know, and also the associated deferred foreign income on the form. And so because failing to report any eligible subsidiaries can lead to inaccuracies in the calculation of the transition tax. Also, you want to have consistent and, uh, and conflict-free information, okay? Also, uh, make sure that everything is complete. So we, we do not want to have missing or untimely filing. And also, you want to have, uh, you want to beef up your paperwork to make sure that you have supporting documentation because uh, keep, you know, if the IRS were to ask you certain information, it's just a lot better to... Uh, tap into your, your records. So always keep thorough records and maintain the necessary uh, re the necessary supporting documentation to substantiate the information reported on Form 965E. So here we are speaking about what? Financial statements, tax returns, and any other relevant document uh, documentation. So having proper documentation can help really when it comes to uh, if there's an IRS inquiry or IRS audits or what have you, you have the ability to prove things, okay? Also, uh, if there are some updates or changes to the form itself, you want to also be aware of that. But that's why it's just a lot better to go to the IRS website as, a co as opposed to uh, going to uh, somebody uh, that, that gives you those tax forms or at least that get somebody who gave you that, that tax form last year, for instance. So long story short, in the interest of compliance, you want to go to the IRS websites for the most up-to-date information. And if you need actually uh, extra help, it's just a lot better to reach out to a professional who can really help you out. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Let's quickly do a recap here. Today's conversation, I spoke to you about Forum 965E. So I gave you the overview. And uh, finally, I gave you the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.